Women warriors known as Amazons have led armies and scorched battlefields in ancient stories. But the idea of an all-women army from the West African kingdom of Dahomey sounds like a myth to many, and the commonly asked question is, how did they come about? In the quest to provide meat and ivory, female elephant hunters ruled the forest of Dahomey. When Huigbaja became king in the 16th century, he repositioned the all-women elephant hunting clique to the service of the kingdom and they became known as Bato. During the period, the flourishing Yoruba kingdom of Oyo forced Dahomey to pay tributes. They often raided Dahomey and captured most of them as slaves. Unwilling to yield to the Yorubas, Dahomey called its citizens to arms and militarized the kingdom. But there was a problem. The Yorubas had superior numbers and that kept tipping the balance their way. After the death of Huegbaja, according to oral history, his twin children, Akaba, a boy, and Hangbe, a girl, took the throne. Akaba battled against the people of the Peme River Valley, but died in battle. After his death, Hangbe continued the campaign and won the war, giving some scholars the reason to believe that she first armed women and led them to battle. When King Agaja took the throne in 1718, he used women as his bodyguards, and this still does not qualify as an army. During the rule of King Tegbasu, Dahomey clashed with the Great Ashanti Kingdom in the Battle of Atakbame in 1764 and declared victory. The Ashantis recounted facing women in the battle. Former British governor of the Gold Coast, Archibald Dazzle, said, Several hundreds are trained to the use of firearms under a field general and subordinate officer appointed by the king. These warriors are regularly exercised and go through their evolution with as much expertness as the male soldiers. When King Gazo came to power in 1818, he reorganized the women warriors, made them a key unit in the army, increased their numbers to over a thousand and made them the heartbeat of the Dahomey army. They became known as Mino, meaning our mothers in the Fung and Ewa language. Maybe because by tradition, they were married to the king. Before battle, they sang songs about their willingness to die for their king, their readiness for victory and past glories. They foretold the doom of the enemy before combat. In other words, these songs were psychological weapons that crushed the adversary's confidence even before they drew the machetes to fight. In their first battle, the female warriors of Dahomey took on the kingdom of Uida with muskets blazing and won. To hit the Yorubas where it hurt most, the Dahomey Amazons evaded their treasured cities Sabe and Ketu with pure ferociousness and won. The captives in this battle were sold into slavery and ended up in Brazil, forming the Afro-Brazilian religion of Condoble. With their surging anger towards the Yorubas, they announced an attack on Abeokuta, a city that housed allies of the Oyo Empire and refugees from the Yoruba land. On their way, they captured Ishaga, a small settlement, and the Bali or village chief and his people pledged their support. On 3rd March 1851, the Dahomey warriors entered Abeokuta, and though the city was walled, the adversaries perceived the presence of Apocalypse, casting a shadow around them. Some chiefs and warriors launched skirmishes but were repelled. They even said the bullets and projectiles were not penetrating the Dahomey warriors. With spouting agility to annihilate the Yorubas, the women warriors killed the walls but unfortunately they landed to the waiting Abeokuta blades that slaughtered them en masse. According to the customs of the Egba people of Abeokuta, the head and genital of the first enemy killed in battle should be sent to the Alake or ruler. It was then that they realized that they had been fighting women all along and nearly got defeated by them. Although the Homer lost this battle, they shook and tested Abeokuta and left a lasting fear in them. The Dahome women warriors also exchanged gunfire with French invasion forces in Abome. They are held in so much esteem that the all-female army unit in the movie The Black Panther was modeled after them. 
The heroic acts of these women taint the popular belief that the African woman's place is the kitchen. Their gallantry shows the staunchness of the African woman in defending her home. Thanks for watching. Support us by sharing, liking our social media pages, and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more mind blowing historical contents.